Welcome back to Quantum Visions and in this video we are about to touch on how they don't believe that reparations is a good thing and that they're saying that America does not have enough money to even give the black people the reparations that they deserve for the wars that they had on us through slavery. And if you want to see more videos like this hit the like and subscribe. Let's get it. California's beaches are home to some of America's priciest real estate, the American dream. A nice place to call your own, raise a family and perhaps build some wealth you can pass on to your children. And yet, in the United States of today, whether that dream comes true still largely depends on the color of your skin. On average, Damn. white families have almost eight times as much wealth as black families do. Oh. So they're saying on an average, black people make about $24,000 a year, where on the contrary, white people are making about $188,000 a year. How far in the wealth gap can you see that black people are in? Like, we're deep in it. We're deep in the poverty gap. Like, we're nowhere near the wealth gap at this point. Like, to say that black people spend about $1.4 trillion a year and that we make only $24,000 a year, that, that says something. Uh... I will go and say that the money that we're spending, the twenty four thousand that we're getting, is not adding up to the conditions that we live in. Like we're getting for one point four trillion dollars a year that we're spending every year, but we're only giving back to other communities. Like, for instance, the Asian people in our community, we're giving money back to them opposed to us having our own people with those same companies in our neighborhood and we have the money rotating we don't have that all that twenty four thousand is going right out of our pocket back into our pocket back out of it again every year so we are recurrent customers basically to the american economy let's continue The U.S. government calls this the racial wealth gap. That gap keeps getting okay. worse. But where does it start? Told you. The main reason for this large and lasting gap between black and white Americans lies at the conditions surrounding the Civil War. That's the conclusion of a government study looking at the roots of the racial wealth divide. It directly traces the wealth gap back to black Americans being barred from accumulating wealth for themselves. Wait, so you're telling me that slavery is the reason why black people are so low on the wealth gap scale? Wow. You know, it actually makes a little bit of sense now that I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Let's continue. But it didn't have to be that way. For a moment, when the Civil War was coming to an end, it looked like America was willing to fix this by giving newly freed slaves what every white settler had received, land. Hmm. The pro-slavery South was almost defeated and Union General William T. Sherman issued his famous Field Order Number 15. He declared I just wanted to say, most people, if you don't understand things about land, you can grow things there. If you have land, you can grow like uh, vineyards and gardens and even trees. And if you don't have a house and you have land you can plant a tree on or several trees, you can use that same tree that you planted to make your house or have a many trees. You can use those trees and build you something that you can live in. Now you have land and you have the substance from the land to help cultivate your land and help keep you out of rain, sleet and snow and all of these other elements of the weather, the sun and all of that. If you need to get a little shelter, you have these things because you have the land 
that you are able to build off of. Now, if you don't have those things, you know, you got to depend on somebody else like the black people been doing for the past 400 some years. Every freed slave family was to receive 40 acres of land, mostly confiscated from white plantation owners. It was an idea backed by Frederick Douglass, the former slave who advised Abraham Lincoln. He helped convince the president that enslaved people should not be sent back to Africa, but instead be given a stake in the land they now called home. But when Lincoln was assassinated, the new president, Andrew Johnson, overturned that 40 acres order. Johnson gave most of the seized land back to white plantation owners. Dang. Johnson had killed America's first and only attempt to give black citizens the same starting conditions as white settlers. Instead, Johnson's way of ending slavery left black Americans on the wrong side of a wealth gap that would never be closed. In 1876, Frederick Douglass decried this as a fundamental flaw in how America's enslaved were set free. You say you have emancipated us. But when you turned us loose, you gave us no acres. You turned us loose to the sky, to the storm, to the whirlwind, and worst of all, you turned us loose to the wrath of our infuriated masters. One and a half centuries after these words were written, America is beginning a new debate over paying reparations. Let's see what we got. Reparations is about money. This ain't new. But it's also... It's about money and it's also about getting back a little bit of something that was taken from us. I don't care how much reparations you give us. It'll never be enough to pay for what you did, what America did to black and brown people here in this country. I don't care how much money you got. It, it will never repay it. It can never remove the memories. It's etched in our brains for the for the rest of our lives. It's etched into our DNA for the rest of our lives. There's no amount of money that you can do, that you can give. It's going to do anything. It's going to change that. However, on the contrary, you can also give money to the people that were that's been here to their uh to their sibling. I mean, to their uh offspring. You can give that money to them to help them to get in a better position in life. We are already 400 years behind. I mean, with a little bit of money, how how much how how far do you think that's going to jump us? Most people are already believing that the money is going to be flushed right down the drain again and back into the Americans' hands. I don't believe that. I believe that there are tons of people on this earth that are black that's in America that's able to function with a nice reparation check. And let's continue. Creating wealth that can be passed on to the next generation. Owning a home is the classic way to do that. Today, 72% of white Americans own a home, while only 44% of African Americans do. And while 8% of white Americans own commercial real estate, only 3% of black Americans do. More than, More than 150 years after the abolition of slavery, pressure is mounting for action. To atone for the past, to even things up for the present, and to create more equal opportunities for the future. So being here was, was immensely powerful and moving. Vice President Kamala Harris saw White House attention on the matter in early 2023. At a port of deportation in Ghana, she made an explicit link between enslaved people and American privilege. All of us, regardless of your background, have benefited from their struggle and their fight. I f the, the craziest thing about what she just said is everybody's been saying she's black, but she said their pain, what they've been through. They, they, they. Not us, not we, but they. So she's already removed herself from the premises of even being black with that type of a comment. Let's continue. And for justice. Thank you. 
But so far, the Biden-Harris presidency sees the question of reparations as an issue for Congress, not the president, and certainly not for a re-election campaign. Freedom. One reason is that, on the whole, more than two-thirds of an Americans are against the idea. But within that is a huge difference. Damn. So you look at the you look at the data right here. You see that all Americans believe that yes, only thirty percent of them believe that the black and the brown people should get reparations. Uh all of the Americans, eighteen percent out of the wait, one hundred percent said yes. So even eighty percent of the white people in America are saying no. Black people don't need reparations. Are the brown people, but they got seventy-seven percent of the black people is saying yes, we need it. So it sh it goes to show you there's no the correlation in the parallel is complete opposites. Let's continue. It's of opinion with black and white Americans almost a mirror image of each other. Didn't I just say that? A Democrat bill on the issue has been stuck in Congress for years. I hope it goes nowhere. Why? Uh, reparations is something with a country that's going bankrupt. We cannot afford it, and we got other priorities that <laughs> highly. Uh, <laughs> that boy said, I hope it goes nowhere. You said, forget y'all. Y'all don't need no. <laughs> that boy said, y'all don't need no money. We broke anyway because it's just stupid. At rank higher than that. I just want to ask you, how much of a political priority is the whole question of reparations for you? I know my brother got so good. It's not. <laughs> Why not? Um, because you have a situation in our country now where uh, black people in America have many pathways to success. He and must have been in that 33% of the black people who said, hell no, was it 20, yeah, 20. Yeah, 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 27, 23%. I said, hell no, black people don't need no reparations. Damn, and you a congressman? And you a brother, man? is isn't just by giving direct money. Um, the second part is, as a nation, we don't have a lot of money. With no chance of a nationwide approach anytime soon, some individual communities have decided to act. I traveled across the country to meet those determined to repair at least some of the economic divide between black and white. So I've been it's hearing hit. about this. Apparently they're supposed to be trying to pass a bill where $1.2 million per black resident will be received if they've been here at least since the 1960s or 70s or something like that. Come on, this is supposed to be a, a national thing, not a state by state thing. Stop playing, man. Stop playing. In California, the home of Tinseltown, where America will decide for the first time whether reparations will become reality or remain fiction for an entire state. This is where the drama is playing out. Manhattan Beach is a well-to-do district with a complicated history. One patch of beach ended up as a public park because of an injustice now commemorated by a plaque. I wasn't the only one who didn't know. Yeah, there was a plaque over there, but the plaque was inaccurate and incomplete and it seemed very whitewashed. Charles and Willow Bruce bought land here in 1921. Mm -hmm. They got in before their white neighbors started developing an interest and the area became known as Bruce's Beach. Okay. Essentially what happened in the 19-teens, Charles and Willa Bruce, they came out here, they set up shop, they had a, a very, very small business where they sold like small things, like bathing suits and things of that nature. And then once they earned enough money, they bought a, another plot of land and ultimately turned their land into what is called uh, Bruce's Beach Resort. They provided a safe wow. space for black people. <laughs> and so what Wow, you see the beautiful things that us black people have created and done and done in this country and it just have been swept away from us due to the color of our skin supposedly because i think it's deeper than the skin tone i really think because i got people darker than me okay and they don't get treated like we get treated all right so all of the great things we have done and it just been swept away from us and they're given to or taken to 
the Caucasian, YT, whatever you want to call them, people, and pretty much have nothing to show f- for it, but some stories that we're able to remember and recall to tell the world. Let's continue. What happened is black people started buying property up there on what is now Bruce's Beach Park. And when the white residents saw black people taking up space and more and more of them coming in, they didn't like it. In the end, the city used a provision called eminent domain to effectively disown the Bruce family. The city turned its new property into a park while white developers around it benefited from rising real estate prices. The case of Charles and Willa Bruce is a That's called gentrification. reference point across America, like here at a conference on black land rights in Boston. This happened all over the country. It happened all the time. And we've got a, you know, a well-documented history of the government at every level, federal, state, and local, using the law and using legal means to deprive black people of property ownership, deprive black people of the right to build wealth and to transfer that wealth. In the first deal of its kind in America, the city of Los Angeles handed the land back to the descendants of Charles and Willa Bruce 100 years after it was taken. Godly! A hundred years after they took the land, they finally gave it back. So the, the further we get in time, the closer the closer the years get to your age. So we in we in 2023 right now. It was 100 years ago it was 1923. In 10 years 1930 is not really going to seem like it was that long ago cuz we're getting further away from it and we're calling back things that happened from that particular time period which will happen eventually. That's pretty much how they do it. They let time go by, make you forget and then they bring it back up. So it's not that deep of a cut when you get the information. I mean, I don't get it. Let's continue. Symbolizes for all of us that it is always the right time to do the right thing. Within months, the Bruce family sold the land back to the city for $20 million. But for the woman who led the fight for this to happen, that result was a disappointment. It ended up as a land deal rather hmm. than bringing black entrepreneurship right. into an all-white area. Right. I mean, I just don't like going back there because it just makes me upset to just yeah. think about just. And here we are. Things are the same. Nothing never changed. Somebody just got a little money in their pocket. It's unfortunate. <laughs> It is unfortunate. Like, we talking about reparations here, but at the same time, like, stuff like that, like, that breaks down your morality. Like, you can have a low morale for her. Well, she is. She's good. like, she like, damn, I did all of this work just so it could be the exact same way it was before I even started. That don't make no sense. We trying to build something that's long lasting not giving back the power back to the same people who we're trying to get the power from. That don't make sense. And I get it. Everybody want to do what they want to do. And that's the reason why we in the conditions that we're in. Not because nobody wants to come together for a natural and a common cause. It's natural for you to do your own thing. It's natural for you to live amongst your own people without having to feel like you're going to be targeted because you look a certain way. That's unnatural. It is what it is. And I hope that eventually we're able to get past this just trying to grab money so we can do me when we can take the money and work together to do us. There's no us in our in our race right now. And that's a problem. There's always a, a day in them, but there's no us. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the like and subscribe. Make sure you hit, click the notification bell if you want to see all the other videos that I post, any new videos that I post. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.